Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. John Hancock. John Hancock. That's a name that stands out now, isn't it? You know, it actually literally stands out on the Declaration of Independence where Mr. Hancock was said to have signed his name so large, so large that the King of England, King George, wouldn't need his, his spectacles for reading to see this name. Yeah, John Hancock, he was making a statement. He was a rebel. If King George ever got hold of him, Hancock's head was going to roll. Well, the Gospel writer Mark is also making a similar statement in the way that he begins his inspired narrative about Jesus. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Wow! Mark is a rebel. He's a rebel with a cause following Jesus, who was perhaps the greatest of rebels with a cause. In this bolder than bold proclamation, Mark declares for all to read that Jesus is Lord and Caesar is not. You know, if Roman officials ever got a hold of Mark after he had written what he wrote, he too was as good as dead. But you know, I don't really think that that mattered to Mark. He was alive in Christ. He didn't sign the document with his name in the large letters like, like John Hancock did, but he did leave what many believe to be his signature in the account of a man running away naked from the Garden of Gethsemane after Jesus was arrested at the end of this narrative. You know, Mark follows Jesus' example here of humility. But even more, Mark follows Jesus' lead of resistance to oppressive forces, not with the strength of sword, but with a message of hope boldly proclaimed in love. And where does Mark begin his proclamation of the good news? In the wilderness, right? There on the fringes of society, God's word is proclaimed to give to all in exile a message of hope. You know, Mark basically says, hear this, people of God. God is with us to help, to comfort, to save us in the wilderness experience of life, all of them. And God's presence is experienced in different ways according to the wilderness that we are encountering. Now, wilderness can take many different forms, several different forms, and it's not always bad. I mean, there can be wilderness experiences of refreshment, the retreat to nature, going for a hike or a camping trip in the woods and connecting with God in creation. But these times of wilderness are often more structured. The wilderness is not so wild. We consume the experience on our terms for a time that we can control. You know, wilderness doesn't always work like that. When the wilderness really becomes wild, there is this chaos and confusion. The time spent there is open-ended, and that way not because we have chosen it to be. You know, whether we know a wilderness of exile like ancient Israel, or a wilderness of persecution like the, the gospel writer Mark had, or, or times of attack from an invisible em- enemy like the wilderness experience that we all share through COVID-19, even wilderness times can become a time of spiritual renewal, as they were for John the Baptist, who emerged from the wilderness there in the Judean wilderness, speaking of his experience of God there. Yes, God is in the wilderness experiences of life, folks. And though the experiences may last longer than we want, God will lead us through the wilderness. Indeed, as our hikes in the woods are are temporary, often following a path, so too will God bring us out of the woods, even if we cannot see the path right now. Sometimes, though, the way through the wilderness that God provides may not be overly attractive. I mean, for example, Cyrus the Persian was was a foreigner who didn't even know the God of Israel, but yet he became the strange instrument that God used to make a return to the Promised Land a reality for ancient Israel. 
at the start of Jesus' ministry. It was, it was an unruly, unpo unpolished character named John who emerged not from a palace or a temple or a military garrison, but from the dust and the dirt of the desert to prepare the way of the Lord. For us today in our virus-induced wilderness experience, God's path forward may take the form of a vaccine. I'm, you know, I for one have an, an irrational reaction to needles. I hate them. But hey, if, if we have words of assurance from trustworthy sources that the vaccine is safe and effective, I will treat this guidance as the word of the Lord and do what is needed to help to ensure not only that I get out of the wilderness in one piece, but that others do as well. Folks, waiting in the wilderness, well, it's not usually a lot of fun. But sometimes, sometimes in the wilderness, we just need to, to stop. Stop and shelter in whatever way we can and let help come to us. Folks, let's remember our history like Mark the Gospel writer did in writing his gospel. Faith history is not a declaration of our independence. It's a declaration of our dependence, our dependence on God. Yes, God has helped his people in the past. He will do it again now and in the future. And friends, remember this, help is on the way. Indeed, because of Jesus, help is always close. There's a bold wilderness statement to be aware of and to embrace. So then, in the name of Jesus, who keeps finding ways to make a statement in love so hope is renewed, even as we wade in the wilderness. Amen.